With multiple reports of unexplained activity that continues to this day, the spiral team returned for more investigations into the unknown, as we take an exploration around the grand old lady of the Broadway and new Wimbledon Theatre. Standing proudly on the Broadway in South London, New Wimbledon Theatre has been entertaining audiences young and old for well over a hundred years. Founded by the Edwardian entrepreneur J.B. Mulholland, often referred to as the pioneer of suburban theatre, he already had venues in Camberwell and Hammersmith and wished to grow his entertainment empire following Victorian expansion in the town. Designed by architects Cecil Macy and Roy Young with a Georgian Renaissance frontage, the building was topped by the Goddess of Gaiety, a winged angel fixed high on the dome above the building. Wimbledon Theatre, as it was originally known, opened its doors on Boxing Day in 1910 with the pantomime Jack and Jill, and since then has housed many plays and musicals, as well as being used as a filming location for many feature films and TV series. It is of course known as the home of London pantomime, with its annual shows drawing thousands of people every year. Many famous performers have appeared on stage here, including Laura and Hardy, Noel Coward, Ivan Novello, the final London performers of the legendary Marlena Dietrich, and in the late 1920s, Fred Astaire and his sister Adele used the former ballroom, now New Wimbledon Studio, as a rehearsal space prior to performing at the London Palladium. In the late 1950s, designer Raymond Cusack worked with the Peter Haddon Company at the theatre before being poached by the BBC in 1963 and went on to design the Daleks in Doctor Who that same year. It was also during this period that the theatre had the world premiere of Lionel Bart's musical Oliver in June 1960. Theatres in general have a reputation for unexplained activity, and with many reports of strange occurrences at this South London venue, it makes New Wimbledon Theatre no exception. On the stage in the 1920s, a sprinkler was set off but there was no fire, and many technicians have felt a presence on the fly floor. In the upper circle, an usher was clearing away after a performance, and heard a woman whistling from the ladies' lavatory, but no one was there. Follow spot operators have been aware of a figure out of the corner of their eye, but there's no one there when they look around. A former manager, who had worked at the theatre for years and didn't believe in ghosts, was working late one evening in his office when a woman in what appeared to be Victorian or Edwardian clothing stood there in front of him before vanishing. In the rear of the dress circle, a presence has been felt many times in the corridor and a man dressed in smart evening wear wanders into the auditorium where he sits in B27 to watch the shows. This figure has been seen by a former front of house manager in 2003 and he told me this story many times. It was also sensed by a previous reading of the venue in 2010 when I brought in a psychic to see what they could uncover too. The stalls are also an interesting area for eyewitness accounts of unexplained phenomena. A dark mass that looks like a figure has been seen many times by ushers which moves down the sides of the auditorium. Box B appears to have a presence there, though what it is, no one is sure. An Edwardian lady with a full length dress and fair hair and who seems very much interested in the care of the theatre has been seen or sensed by people over many years walking around the front of the stage and auditorium. In 2013, a patron reported to me about seeing a full and clear apparition by CH1 in the stalls and what she described as a Puritan man in a long coat, wide brimmed hat and boots. This was in a full auditorium as lights went down on Act 1 of a show. On this investigation, our first since 2012 after a four year break, I am joined by Mandy and Annalisa along with guests Pete and Katie. Although we didn't have the full spiral team here, it was good to keep it a small group, and I was interested to see what Mandy, who has been sensitive since childhood, would pick up on. 
She is not a professional medium and therefore has nothing to prove, and what I like to call a raw psychic, and has sent intriguing details of places on previous investigations that were not known to the public. It's worth noting that apart from Mandy, who's been to see shows here, the rest of us have a strong connection with the theatre, but she knows little about its history or alleged paranormal claims, much of which is not in the public domain. So it's very exciting, Sparrow Paranormal are back now uh, after four years um, at this wonderful venue in Wimbledon. I do the annual ghost walks here, so I do know a lot of the folklore and tales that people tell me. Um, some going back 50, 60 years, some very recent, and a lot of reported, repeated sightings. So what would be interesting is me walking around with Mandy, who's been sensitive since she was a child, and see if she can match what's been seen before. Also, if it matches with a previous reading I had done at the theatre uh, five years ago. There's a couple of facts about this theatre we've only recently um, uncovered, which is not in the public domain. So if she picks up on that, that will be very interesting. It's really exciting to be back in Spiral. I can't wait to get started. And to come back to the new Wimbledon Theatre. Um, an office which was just off the upper circle corridor. I used to come and get the post every day and that's when I met Mark. So it's just really lovely to be back. Yeah, very excited. We've uh, been to Edinburgh last week just to go to the vaults. So I think we're in that sort of mindset and that, that ready to uh, experience something um, locally. It's going to be great, yeah. So we're very passionate about the theatre, especially this one in particular. So yeah, really excited to see what we're going to find or not find. Uh, yeah, we have... Um, Quite a good relationship with the theatre, we come in quite often. Um, we're very, very local. Um, myself sort of grew up in this area, so I always wanted to um, visit here as much as I could, really. Yeah, just finding out if certain stories we've heard are true and just getting another person's perspective sounds really awesome. Yeah. New Wimbledon Theatre, the Grand Lady of the Broadway, as it's called. Um, hope you join us for the night. Calva, we're doing some new experiments. Uh, we're actually going to go a little bit old school and do a trigger object. Now this is B27, um, a couple of mediums and our former manager picked up on someone sitting in this chair who comes down from this corridor here. So I've got two pound coins already drawn around. I'm going to put it here and hopefully they might move them with a lock off camera. With Mandy arriving to join us, we begin a walk round of the theatre, starting on the stage. So we're in the stage area, we're joined by Mandy, and obviously I know stories about this place. She doesn't. Even Pete, you know, you really haven't been on here that often, have you? No, it's a treat to be this side. Yeah. I've done bits and bobs here, but yeah. But here, this end, rather than that end, and that's all I know at the moment, but I've got goose pimples at this end that I didn't have at that end, and that's not because it's cold. Okay. The team move into the auditorium, beginning in the upper circle, an area with frequent reported activity. <laughs> Imagine going in the ladies' toilets. <laughs> no, what it was, because I just saw a flicker of something down here. I don't know, it could have been a shadow, but... Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure I saw a little something, a little something. out the corner of my eye, but it's not in here. In the upper circle, uh, where the follow spots operate, also this is three levels in this theatre. Activity has been reported up here by numerous follow spot operators, uh, but Mandy doesn't know that. It's interesting where the follow spots are. Uh, many uh, follow spot operators have actually, out of the corner of their eye on the right hand side, felt something behind them. And when they look around, obviously there's no one there. This can be during a show, uh, even during getting times. Uh, so Mandy's seeing a flickering. Could be just a flickering, because we're, we're in quite dark uh, auditorium. But that's been reported quite a few times to me over the years uh, by about four or five different people. So interesting. Is it your mind playing tricks on you? Because you're very focused. When you're doing follow spotting, you're very focused. So who knows? We'll let you decide on that one. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, this, I there. can see the bottom step of... Oh yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just there. It was like the same flitting thing, but that way. OK. What's a flitting... How can it you describe like it? It's black that 
quickly is there and then isn't. And okay. then you look and it isn't. Which is why I was doing that. Okay. I saw it twice. You saw it twice, right. So it's the same thing. Same, or oh, the same it's, it's, pattern, yeah. yeah. Coming into the dress Thank circle. You. I start my tours off in this uh, corridor. This was in your movie. It was in my movie, that's correct, yes, the opening sequence. So this is the piano bar all being refurbished. Very beautiful. Yeah. Big atmosphere in here. Yeah. 1920s. Okay. Stuff. Um, a painting. 1920s? That's the guy who built the theatre, J.B. J. B. Mulholland. Holland who built the theatre in 1910. Trying to find words, struggling with words. More out there than in here, to be honest. I think. Yeah, definitely more as we came out on this landing here than I did in here at all. It's a bit different, it feels different. I don't know whether it's because it's warm. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite warm here. It always gets quite warm here, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. But it feels quite heavy. Quite, like... Come out here, as you want. Okay. Are stairs off? Yes. I'm going to go... Do, do yeah, you feel... I need, I need to go to the gents' toilet now. I don't have a toilet thing, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> you need to go to the gents? Okay. Well, no, I need to go... It uh, says this. Yeah. But then you go... What just here was where you felt it before? Yeah, like somebody rushing past. Uh -huh. I think it was, I can't tell, like a young person who had been, who was like, I don't want to say a servant, but assisting somebody, and they'd left something that belonged to that person, and it was something important, so they were rushing up to get it. And I don't know if they ever made it back down again, and I don't know whether they tripped and fell or something, but... People walk up here and feel somebody go whoosh, past them running, like a cold whoosh. And that okay. happened to me when I came here for the pantomime, yeah. and it happened to Katie. Okay. Like you could almost feel your hair go like that as somebody went flying by. This was my office, uh, like showing other people, and um, we literally just do this loop here. And we have someone knock on the door, and we'd open the door and there'd be nobody there. And it got so bad at one point that it went on one day for about half an hour. Someone would knock and my colleague would open the door immediately. He was standing right by it and there was nobody there. And you hear footsteps. But then you, because you can't see through walls, there might just be Yeah, and you've got an echo in this yeah. theatre anyway. But I yeah. promise you, it was a very distinct knock. Do you remember maybe yeah. that yeah. doing that? No one in there. Oh no, ticket centre in there. Okay. Yeah, ticket. Very distinct knock. And then, and then go. there'd be nobody here. Have you had anything along those lines when you've been what doing your walk? Not in this area, but in the office, and we've had someone knocking on the door, and then there was no one there, but there weren't any front of house around, as far as we know. Okay. And um, the only person was the building safety officer backstage, we think. So we never really got to the bottom of that one. Yeah, there was three of us, wasn't there? Or yeah. four of us, mm. but... I can't remember it was me and you, the manager, maybe. We are now in the dress circle. Uh, the iron is in. You know that when you feel like, you know that whole cliche to somebody's watching us mm -hmm. feeling from up there, from where we've just been? Yeah. It feels like somebody is up there. Yeah, it's been reported. Who's interested in what we're doing. It's a well to do gentleman, I think. Mm hmm. And he is, I think he's just interested, he doesn't seem, there's no like angry feeling or anything like that, but it's as if we've gone up there and now he knows we're here and he's finding out a bit more about what we're doing. So it's a live presence as opposed yeah. to residual? Yeah, I think. Okay, well, if you are here and you can hear us and you'd like to contact us or make some, maybe you can move the coins. I've put on the seat the other side of the dress circle. Okay, see. Okay. Thank 
Okay, the coins haven't moved yet, but the the nice is young, as they say. This is box B. This is connected to the ambassador lounge. You see a whole tiffin. Yeah. Who's got seen anything yeah. in the opposite box from where we are? I don't answer for a minute because um, there's like a really tiny but really, really bright light and I thought it was my eyes and I thought it might have been a camera flash but every time I look over there it happens. Do you want to go around there? Just below the light. Mm -hmm. It's happening every time I blink and look there, it's there. So we're not in, we haven't got all the lights off, we might be in night vision just to get a little bit of a uh, brighter picture but we're actually in low light. Uh, we can actually see quite well. Um, so it's, we're not in pitch darkness. Not, but I can just see this bright, tiny, mini okay. Tinkerbell. Every time you look over. Mm. But I'm not. I can't tell you what it is. A presence. No something's been sensed in this box, but they've not actually seen anything. But something's been sensed. Mr. Gentleman from up there in here. Could be. I don't need to know something. Yes, dear. Which is. When the theatre was first built mm -hmm. and through then and then, the war happened, didn't it, after, shortly after yes. and everything. But during that time, did people have seats, their own, like, could you buy or hire a regular spot? Mandy could be referring to house seats. These are seats reserved for a particular guest by management or a member of the production. If there is an Ed, uh, a gentleman, if there is an Ed, uh, a gentleman, be very grateful if you could just try and contact us. He's up there still. He's up there. Probably wondering what on earth we're doing. Mm. Well, we're really trying to come and talk to you. I explained to Mandy about the sightings and reports of a well-dressed gentleman seen around this area of the dress circle. When I do my tours, um, when I bought the previous reading here. One of our former front house managers uh, was here uh, in 2004 talking to a manager during the day about 10.30 in the morning. He was standing where you are, sort of the other side, but looking this way, and the manager was looking that way. And here he saw a gentleman he described, he told me a story very tough many times, a guy in Edwardian. Black suit. Yeah, very, very well to do. Okay, and when the manager looked round, he vanished. Um, when the previous reading by a psychic was here five years ago, where I took them around, they picked up on a well smart Edwardian gentleman coming down that corridor and probably sitting around this seat here, B27. Okay. Watching the shows and usually rehearsals, apparently. That's what Sandy got this They're watching, looking rehearsals. I feel like he has a connection to the place, not the owner, not him no. from the bar, but um, maybe. Uh, Director or some such. I want to say choreographer, but I don't think he looks the type. <laughs> Have you got a mental picture? Yeah. Tall, thin, long legs, black suit. Black suit. The 60s. 1960s? No, he's, he looks in his 60s. In his 60s. I'm shocking you poor at guessing people's ages, but that's how he appears. Era? Could you say what era? My history is really, really poor. Um, 30s, perhaps? 30s. Maybe a bit before. Okay. The city did have its, you know, uh, over the years, one very prominent one, in-house uh, theatre directors who were a bit all in-house shows. Now we're now it's a touring venue. Mm -hmm. What we call a receiving house. Um, but back in the day, they did have in-house companies performing plays week in, week out. Pretty much like rep, which is a little bit of a dying art, unfortunately. So, yeah, they have the weekly rep bit. So, yeah, you're on the you're on the right lines. You're on the right lines. So we're back in the, the box, the other side of the auditorium. What's that? Sounds like somebody's walking up and down above us. Uh, there is. N there's actually nothing. Something. It's the stairs, isn't it? I'm trying to think what would be. Uh... Lauren Hardy have been on that stage, my heroes. That would make you happy. Yeah, I'm such a Lauren Hardy fan. Um, 
if there's anyone here, if you can make a noise or affect one of us or just say hello, um, that would be lovely. I didn't touch it, did I? I don't know, but I did see it. The curtain just... Really? Hold on, I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here. Nowhere near the curtain, it just went like that. We enter the stalls area where dark shapes and apparitions have been seen on many occasions. So now we're going to the saloon bar. I brought everyone into the cellar because of an intriguing historical footnote. We didn't know this until recently, it's only it's not really available on public domain. This cellar was used as a mortuary during the Second World War. Oh. We, didn't, we didn't know until recently. I don't know why, how that information was kept quiet or anything. Yeah, it was used as a mortuary. Oh. Okay, we're now in the stalls area. Oh, there's a lot of stalls here. Let you uh, do your thing. The flitting things goes back over behind where you are at the moment, coming down. Okay. Okay. I uh, like. Well, like a it's not a word, is it? A wind or no, a figure? No, like a black thing coming down that way twice. But it didn't go back up, it came down. Mm -hmm. And then I was doing something and then it came down again. A lot of ushers um, over the years said to me that they've seen, um, this is during performance times or when they're clearing up, a black, what they call shape, mm. going across there and around that, that side, the other side as well. Yeah. It come down there yeah, it goes it goes along. Yeah. Mm. That's right. It's a very interesting story I also. I think that with a little coaxing that person might want to share something. Right, something. should we go over the other side and have a look? This all relates to something else as well over okay. there. A really good story here that a customer told me that happened to them one night. What did you say? Yeah. What was it? <laughs> like, <laughs> really, when. That's exactly where the I should have seen it and reported to it me many, through. many times. Yeah, right. that's going if back. If it could have made a noise, that would be the noise. It didn't. It? It's like a just, it? just a blurry black thing. Yeah, that's what's been reported many times. But they can't. It's not a figure. They can't really make it out as a figure. It's just a, a blur. It's person height, though. Mm-hmm. Probably tall, a little bit taller than you. Any chance you but when I was over there, it was over here, and now we're over here mm -hmm. and it's over there. I'll oh, come over here, come on. And that is the same as whatever is that side of the stage. It's the same feeling. All oh, right, okay. But the, I don't know what it is. A lot, of, so a lot of ushers have said that to me over the years sometimes a couple of years apart they felt a sort of dark sh something dark shape I'm not saying evil no, don't go down that silly no. no just dark dark just shape I explained about a reported sighting at this very spot from 2013 I wonder if it's related to the dark mass previously seen I got a call once um, yeah uh, about three years ago it was now uh, a couple had come to see a show here uh, two sisters we were sitting in H1 and 2, sorry, H1, right there. Um, just as the show, lights were going down on H1 of the show, she just felt friends, looked up, and there was a tall, dark man with a wide brimmed hat, breeches, long dark coat, clear goatee beard, she looked like a Puritan, oh. standing in front of her, looking at her, and he vanished. No one else in the auditorium, full auditorium, no one else saw it. And it's interesting that they phoned up the theatre to try and work out. If anything weird, yeah, yeah. The, she actually didn't want to talk to me first because I'm being silly, but then I coached it out of her when I told her what I did. And yeah, probably my favourite story here. Mm -hmm. There's a full apparition right there.
Sorry, yeah. on, that's Jay, isn't it? Age one and two, sorry. If anyone is here and you'd like to come forward to make a sound. This swishing person is not the same as the flitting person. Right, I different. To say that. Okay. Like, oh, right, I thought you, you had that sort of, oh, what's that up there kind of look? Mm. I think it's because when you look at the lights and things, you mm. get that kind of, yeah. yeah. Our evening at New Wimbledon Theatre had been fascinating and it had been a privilege to explore this slice of theatre heritage. Mandy had picked up on a number of things that had been previously reported, in particular, the smart dressed man in the dress circle and the dark mass in the stalls. We have no idea, of course, if the dark shape is related to the Puritan figure, seen by the patron in 2013. The lock-off camera produced no results, but quite frankly, I wasn't expecting it to. Next time you are visiting the venue, spare a moment to wonder if something else is watching the shows with you, a something that hasn't necessarily bought a ticket.